Today we're talking about how to recognize self-limiting beliefs. Now, if there is somebody that you want to stop holding you back, it's you. How is it we can do some amazing and sometimes unexplainable things? Like heal our own bodies by the power of our thought. Mother's intuition, the law of attraction. Can we really tap into our subconscious mind? Can we really create our own realities? It begs the question, are we novice gods? Today we're talking about how to identify self-limiting beliefs. Now, throughout this whole documentary series, I'm presenting to you ideas and, uh, and evidence, really, that shows that we are capable of so much more. I wish that I could take you on my whole journey, but my journey really started about five years ago when somebody pointed out to me all of the limiting beliefs that I had told myself and that I had started to believe in. And once I recognized that that I had these limiting beliefs, it gave me an opportunity to change that. So I'm sharing what I can with you. I wish I could take you on the full journey, but some of these I just kind of have to explain to you. But let me tell you a little, little story. So uh, there was this lady, a grandma really, who was babysitting her grandchildren, and one of the grandkids got into the car and was messing around and let the emergency brake off. And the car rolled and rolled over one of her grandchildren who was pinned underneath the car. And she ran out there and she grabbed the bumper of the back of the car and she lifted the car so that her grandchild could crawl away. Isn't that amazing? Well, the press, the media, really wanted to interview her and she would not consent to an interview. And finally, uh, I think it was a nephew of hers, convinced her to talk to uh, this member of the media who asked her, why are you so embarrassed to talk about this? Why won't you, you know, explain what happened here? And she says, because I am 70 years old and all my life, I believed I couldn't lift that car. I believed I couldn't do things. I wonder what else I could have done had I believed I could do it. Now, I don't know if the story is actually true. I don't know if that's a folklore story. I've heard it from several different people. And, uh, but the thing is, is the idea certainly is true. What do you believe that you can't do? What is holding you back that if you only believed you could do this miraculous thing, that you would live an amazing life? You would be the best full version of yourself. You would be braver, you would be stronger. You would have much better impact in people's lives. What is it that you believe right now that is holding you back? These are self-limiting beliefs. These are beliefs that you can change and, uh, and embrace new exciting ideas that really let you live as the full version of yourself. So I want to point out just kind of three things that, uh, that are easy, uh, easily identifiable as self-limiting beliefs, and then you can look at those and kind of evaluate what they're hiding from you. The first one is perfectionism. Now, perfectionism is this wonderful lie that we tell ourselves that we can't do something until it's absolutely perfect. Or we put on these appearances that, that you know, life is just amazing for us or, you know, everything, every, everything is just perfect, perfect that goes on outside the house or on Facebook or, you know, on, on YouTube or anything like that. We put on these these false appearances that life is better for us than it really is and we don't show up as our true authentic selves. Well, when we do that, just recognize that there are limiting beliefs in there about who you believe you are when you are trying to hide behind this amazing facade, this perfect facade. When you stop and recognize what it is you're hiding, what deficiencies you feel that you have, what limits you feel, you know, people would not love you for anymore, or they would not accept you for, or they would say unkind things. Once you start to recognize that, you will realize that you have some beliefs about yourself where you feel like you are not enough. You're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not educated enough, you're not credentialed enough, you're not athletic enough. 
All of these different things are these beliefs about ourselves that are holding us back. And the problem is, is when we use perfectionism, we gloss over and we pretend life is better for us than it is. Instead of getting to the root of, wait a second, why don't I feel smart enough? And if that's the issue, well, you can address that issue. You can attend classes, you can read more, you can study more, you can do different things to prove to yourself, look for the evidences that show that that is actually true, and you can overcome that. But if you're hiding behind perfectionism, you're never going to get rid of those self-limiting beliefs that are just below the surface of that. So um, anyway, just kind of recognize that that's one sign that you have self-limiting beliefs is if you practice perfectionism. Now, the next one is that if you have approval addiction. And what this is, is you are constantly needing approval outside validation for your existence, for your worth, for the, uh, the value that you add to the world. If you are looking for other people to approve you, oh boy, that's going to be... <laughs> you're constantly going to be just, uh, you're going to be missing out. Now, years ago, I went to this conference and, uh, and there was this really famous speaker and I got to sit at the table with him and we got to just kind of pick his brain. And this other guy that was there at the table, he wanted to be a great speaker like him. And so he was asking him what he needed to do. And the speaker, you know, was getting a little, conf you know, a little frustrated with him because this guy was telling him all the reasons why he couldn't do the same things. And uh, just, I mean, it was very clear from the conversation that he had these limiting beliefs about himself. And so this great speaker looked at him and said, I now give you permission to be who you were meant to be. And like made it like this royal gesture kind of thing. And we all kind of laughed. And But then he pointed out, he said, you don't need permission from the universe. You need permission from yourself. You don't need approval from everyone else. You just need to allow yourself to be who you were meant to be. And it was a, it was a great educational moment for me and the other people at that table. I hope that helps you as you are thinking about what is holding you back. Why are you needing approval from other people? And once you can let that go and instead get clear and centered and fully aligned with who you are inside, then you can start to make that tremendous difference. Now, this third um, thought for you to kind of look at it, you know, that will help you identify self-limiting beliefs is this thought of worthlessness. And we get caught in this all the time that we just, we don't feel worthy. We don't feel like we're enough. And we tell ourselves that story over and over again. I'm not smart enough. I'm not eloquent enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough. All of these not enoughs <clears throat> excuse me, wreck us because we're so concerned with this worthiness level that we don't feel like we can attain. Well, if you have those feelings of worthy, worthlessness, if you look at those and take time to become acquainted with where you're at right now, forgive yourself for self-limiting thoughts, self-limiting beliefs, and allow yourself to be who you are truly meant to be, where you're at, and allow yourself to grow, let go of any thoughts of worthlessness. Let go of any, you know, perfectionism that's where you're trying to hide behind this facade. Just be you, the real you, the full you. I talked to a coach once who pointed out to me that they can, they can, they've synthesized music so well that the computers can play full orchestral songs, but when we listen to it, we don't like it because it's absolutely perfect. And we can tell the difference between that and a real live performance. And we prefer the real live performance because it resonates with us. It's human. It has imperfections. You have imperfections. Own it. Allow yourself to be that full version. Now, I do want to share, just kind of in closing, um, a poem uh, by by Marie, I'm sorry, by Marianne Williamson. I love this because it talks about who you were truly meant to be. 
And she says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plain small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that others will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to, born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not in just some of us. It is in everyone as we let our light shine. We unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I want to share that with you because when you start to recognize your limiting beliefs, you have the opportunity then to choose new beliefs. Try them on like a nice, comfortable sweatshirt. Try on new beliefs that you can't, I am confident, I am powerful, I am friendly, I am smart, I am memorable. As you start to remind yourself of these things and allow yourself to have new beliefs that do not limit you. I am a child of God, I have eternal significance. I have a purpose, I have meaning to my life. As you start to tell yourself these things and flip the script, you can create amazing things in your life. What can you add? Now, are you ready to join the conversation? Are you willing to add your voice, your thoughts, your ideas, your impressions? If so, add them in the comment section below. We need your voice. Now, if you have been inspired to take action, don't let an impression slip by. Train yourself to listen to and follow your inner voice. Of course, the best place to take action is at scottwilhite.com because if you join me for a free web class, you will receive a copy of my Purpose Planner, the tool you've been missing that will help you uncover your purpose. What if you are a god in the making? That would mean there's purpose to your life, meaning to your challenges. You have a great work to do. May you have the courage, faith, and power to become who you were truly meant to be. See you next time.